YouTube. Um, my name is Chrissy. I'm the owner and breeder of Leader Stocksons. Um, I've been getting a lot, a lot of um, requests about tube feeding, how it's done, um, different steps, what you feed, stuff like that. And instead of answering the same questions over and over again, um, I decided to make a tutorial of puppy tube feeding for Dachshunds. You could also use this for other breeds as well. If you just follow the steps, um, I illustrate, which I'm going to go through. Um, as you can see, I'll give you a quick tour. This is my puppy room. <laughs> we turned the dining room into um, a room just for the dogs about two years ago. Um, for a place for the moms to rest and quiet and for people to come and visit the puppies when they're ready to go. Um, this here is our mother of the day. I don't know if I can, you can see. Here we go. It's Miss Mocha. Say hi, Miss Mocha. Miss Mocha is um, six years old. Um, she had five puppies originally, but one passed away. It was very small. Um, failure to thrive would be my assumption of death. Um, now her one little girl I noticed this morning, um, is also not gaining weight and lost another ounce. So, it's at that point I decide, um, maybe she needs a little bit of supplement, and, um, and that's what we're going to do. Um, sometimes if puppies lose too, it's normal for them to lose weight at first, but you don't want them to lose too much weight, and I'm sorry my phone's acting all goofy. Um. You don't want them to lose any more than two ounces. Um, I always mark down all the ounces. She was six ounces when she was born. Now she's almost down to five. So that is way too small. And they're four days old, so they should have at least gained an ounce by now. At least she should have. So what we're going to do is to feed um, for her. One of the things you never want to do is you never want to get a dachshund dehydrated. She's on the verge of that, and I'll show you how you can tell. Okay, we're going to show you here a couple things. All right. Sorry if my camera's all weird. I'm trying to do this on my camera phone. All right, one of the main things you can tell right away with a dachshund if they're dehydrated is see how sluggish she is? She just doesn't want to do too much, and she's kind of like, she's not quite right. I've seen many puppies, and to um, an untrained person, you'd think, oh, well, she's fine. No, she's not. See how she's sluggish? She's not really energetic. When you, like, grab the scruff her neck, she doesn't really scream as much as a, n a normal puppy would. She grunts, but she doesn't scream. Um, another thing to um, take note of would be um, this. When you pull up on their neck skin, I don't know if I can get a picture of it. When you pull up on their neck skin here, see how it stays up? See how it, here I'll do it again. It goes up and it stays up. It almost like crimps the skin. Um, that's a t if it, if you pinch the skin and it stays up, like that. Oh, this stupid phone. Hold on, let me do something different. Alright. See how it stays up like that? In a normal puppy, it should go right back down. I'll get I'll give you another puppy compare. Alright. Here's a hydrated puppy. See how she's a little more energetic, looking for the nipple, wanting to walk. Yeah, obvious difference. She wants to move, the other puppy not so much. And I'll show you the difference with her fur. You pull up on the skin, it goes right back down. You pull up on the skin, it goes right back down. With hers, you pull up on the skin, it stays there. So, this puppy is on the verge of being dehydrated if already not. So that means she's not getting enough milk. We gotta supplement her or she will die. I hate to be blunt, but that's the way it goes. These little guys can get dehydrated very quickly. Once they go into dehydration, they go into what I call sluggo mode, where they don't want to do anything, and 
Once they're dehydrated, their heart doesn't like to pump very well because their blood thickens. And once that happens, and they go into respiratory distress, and then they do one of the gap. I call it the gasps of death. And you tr want to try not to have that happen because it's very hard to get a puppy back from that state. Um, you have to get fluids into a puppy really quick. And sometimes you even have to do like rescue breathing for the puppy to try to get his respiratory system in a regular pace again, which for a puppy is pretty fast. Um, so, um, yeah, that, so this is what we're going to do. What you're going to want to do is, you can do this two ways. You can either get, I hope you can see it, you either can get formula from the store or you can make your own. There's tons of recipes online that you can make for puppies um, and, um, you know, homemade puppy milk. And it's just as good as the um, store-bought commercial brands, if not better. Um, one of the things I want to point out before I start this is, you see how she's like, just like sluggish? Well, also it's something I can't point out, but I'll point it out anyway. She's cold. She's been with her mommy all morning and she's cold. That's another sign that she's dehydrated and needs some, a little bit of help. Um, when they don't have enough of caloric intake or when they don't have enough fluids, um, they're not going to be able to have the energy to maintain their body temperature. So that's another sign that you're probably going to want to get your puppy fed. Um, a lot of people want to nurse their puppies. The only problem with that is when you have one that's the, on the verge of dehydration, like this one is, you want to try to get fluids into that puppy as quickly as possible. You don't want to stretch it out and try to guess what the puppy's getting as opposed to when you tube feed. You know exactly what they're getting. You know it's getting into their belly as opposed to dribbling down their chin. And it doesn't take 20 to 30 minutes of a nursing session each time. Um, this is quick. It's painless. You'll see it's painless for the puppy. If anything, she'll squawk a couple times because it's, the tube going down the throat is a little uncomfortable. But um, once it's in there, um, they suckle on it just like if they're suckling on their mom's um, nipple. So, um, the stuff you're going to need for this is, you can get these from the vet. If your vet's a good vet, he'll give it to you and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, things you're going to want to need. As soon as I find the right clip for it. There we go. A 10 ml syringe. Okay, with no needle on it. A lower lock top will help um, to get the catheter on. The lower locks are best. Um, 10 cc syringe or 10 ml syringe, whichever, same thing. Um, you can get these online. Here, I'm hoping you can see this, so I'm trying my best here. You can get these online or um, you can get them from your veterinarian. If you get them online, you don't have to explain to your veterinarian. If you are comfortable with your veterinarian and he doesn't give you a lot of BS, um, he'll give them to you. He'll even get, you know, they're only a couple bucks if you want to buy them online. Um, next thing you're going to need is a urinary catheter. This is something is used on humans, um, but um, it's used as tube feeding devices, it does the same thing. Um, for me, I used 10 French pediatric style. Um, these you usually can get online or you can get them um, through a prescription from your vet. The veterinarians usually will carry these. They don't like to give them away because they don't want anybody to experiment. Usually they'll, a good vet will show you how to do this. Um, if your vet doesn't want to show you how to do this, it's probably time to find a veterinarian, especially if you're a breeder and you could you want to continue to do this for a long time to come. He's going to want to make sure that, you know, you're aware and you're equipped to handle, you know, a puppy in this situation. Um, so, like I said, you're going to want a, a urinary catheter. Here, I'll show you up close. This one's a, this one's a 10 French, and it's it says CH right here. That stands for children or pediatric. It's the same thing for catheters. Okay, it's a self cath. <laughs> All right, it's my, just my phone going off. Don't be alarmed. It's in a sterile container until you open it. So this tube here is completely sterile. Doesn't matter so much with the syringe. 
but you know you want to make sure it's clean warm soapy water let it dry for at least you know the time in between two feedings you want to let it completely dry and disassemble it on the counter like this while you're drying it do not use any harsh chemicals do not use any bleach um, this detergent is more than appropriate don't use any antibacterial soap there's a lot of chemicals in there you don't want in your puppy Regular dish detergent is fine. It, you don't have to go crazy with cleaning it. If you clean it out right away, you don't get all the residue that gets all crusty in there. So don't be a slacker about it. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna take the cathode out of the container. I preferably tell people, if you have a bunch of these, do not reuse the same one over and over again. Um, if you are a breeder and you're worried about the cost, um, I would say, my advice to you would be buy them because the cost of these is going to be less than a, the cost of a dead puppy. So, first thing you're going to do when you take it out, you'll see on the end it has two holes. One on the top here, and another one on the bottom. And they're in different, they're in different sites. Those are what you're going to want to get into the puppy's stomach. Okay, and up here it's wider. And, oops, throwing shit around now. You're going to clip this part onto here and make sure it's nice and snug on there like you just can't yank it off like i gotta really yank that off you want to push that in there so while you're in the process of tube feeding you don't want to like this whole thing to come apart and milk to go everywhere and possibly milk to go in the wrong place in the puppy you don't got time for that so what you're going to do is you're going to measure how do I get, how do I know that it's in the puppy's stomach, you're going to ask. You're going to measure the puppy's stomach. In a puppy, stomach is about right here, okay? Right under the rib cage, okay? That's where the pouch of the stomach starts, right under there, okay? That's when, when the puppies are nursing, that's the first thing that gets swollen is right under there. That's where the pouch is. So you're going to want to lay the puppy straight. Find right here where the end of the ribs are, okay? So the stomach would be right here. We want to measure from the mouth to the that stomach. So we're going to go like this, hold that there, and then we're going to measure to the mouth of the puppy, which is right here. And you could do this a couple times to make sure you got your measurements right, because you don't want to push it too far inside and then hurt the puppy. And this is very flexible, so, you know, it's it's not like it's hard, you're going to pierce anything inside. So you're going to measure, and then right here, some people will mark it with um, some black permanent marker. I don't do that. I think it's a waste of time for me because, you know, I usually just grab it. But you can do that too if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, your own judgment or your own remembrance. And go like this, and this is from the mouth to the stomach, that's how long we're going to be going in. Seems almost the length of the puppy, but according to this puppy's measurements, that's where it is. And I'll show you again. That's where the puppy's stomach is. This is where the mouth is. So you're going to want to grasp it, the catheter right here. So that's the length, okay? You do not, I repeat, you do not want to insert this any further than your finger. Again, you could do is if you don't feel comfortable just holding it with your tip you can get a black permanent marker and mark the edge right here so while you're inserting it you know where the black mark is you're going to want to stop at the puppy's lips where you put that black mark you do not want to insert it any further you do not want to get this into the intestines the intestines are very sensitive and they can bleed and once you get a newborn to bleed you might as well just start burying bit digging the hole because it's very hard to get a puppy to stop bleeding um, internally all right, so what you're going to want to do after that is you're going to want to fill up your catheter. You can do this one out of two ways. You could either fill it up like this, or you can stick, actually stick the tube in and then suck it out. Um, you experiment. You do what works for you. I'm not your mommy. <laughs> Um, you're, I'm assuming these are grown people watching this video. And then you're going to want to get all the air out. Okay? Um, it, it's totally okay if you have like a tiny little air bubble at the tip. That's not going to really hurt much. But you're going to want to get every all the air out of the line. 
and you can suppress you can compress the needle the syringe to make sure you have everything on the line um, for a newborn puppy anything from 5 cc's or ml's to 10 cc's is appropriate um, I've used 5 cc's for a puppy that's really small um, for this particular puppy since he is almost five days old now I'm going to use 8 cc's of formula that might seem a lot for a little puppy but as dehydrated as he is he, he she's going to need it um, what you could also do is you can get some water into him um, after you're done tube feeding since we ha we're only putting eight cc's in and I usually would recommend ten that extra two cc's you can fill this up with regular tap water and insert that that way he has a little bit of extra fluid but you know the milk is going to be more than enough as well but if you want that added security you can do the same thing with water if you need to get fluids into a puppy really really quick so I'm going to remeasure hold on a second Some more light, maybe that will help. All right, I'm going to remeasure, and that's how far I want to go. Okay, and then you hold this, you don't lose that spot unless you're going to mark it, then you're good to go. You want to insert it in the mouth, as you can see, he's starting to suck on it. That's fine. Now, as you're pushing down, you're going to feel a little bit of resistance, like this. You're going to say, Oh, god, I don't want to hurt him now. There's two pipes and there's two airways in there, or not two airways, but two holes that could possibly go in. One is the lungs, um, the bronchial, the, the bronchial tube of the lungs, and then the other one is the esophagus. You're going to want to get it down the esophagus. With a 10 French, it is very hard to get this into the lungs. There's going to be a lot of resistance. So the only place this could possibly go is down the esophagus. Um, there's a you put it back here as you can see he's got his tongue make sure he's got his tongue down okay now he'll start to suckle on it and you're going to want as he's suckling you're going to want to gently like do some back and forth movements like this okay until you feel like there's going to be like almost like a little sphincter muscle in there i'm not sure that's what it is but that's what it's going to feel like and you got to kind of poke through it until you get it and if you need to straighten the puppy out to get it in there. Sometimes this takes a couple of attempts. If you're if you're um, healthcare savvy and um, like you're an RN or an EMT, I'm an EMT, so this doesn't bother me. I know it takes sometimes several attempts to try this. And sometimes the puppy's neck is just kinked and you can't get it in there. Here, let me get some air for this. Okay. Now see how that went down? Now, there's one way you can tell that this, the tube is not in the puppy's lungs. One, he's not gagging. And this is another way you can tell. Once it's in there, and you can see the puppy isn't in any discomfort, you suppress about two, M two cc's. Here, I'm trying to show you. Okay? Now, that, as a test, if there's no milk coming out of the nose, and he's not gagging, and still breathing freely, you know you have it in the stomach. And we have it in the stomach right now. So we're going to suppress the rest of it. I'll pull it away a little bit. You're going to want to do it slowly, not fast. And he might scream a little because it's probably a little cold. You could also warm up the formula, but don't make it sear and hot. I find it works best at room temperature, that puppies usually tolerate that pretty well. And as you can see, as his belly's filling up, he probably feels like he's nursing, like, you know. Now he's going to start getting like a little antsy because his belly's starting to fill up. And by the way, I keep calling this a him, but it's really a her. As you can see, she's not really in any more discomfort than she is when she's nursing. 
Anytime you start getting bubbles out of the nose or gasping for air, take this out and immediately stop. You do not have it in the stomach. But if you have noises, the puppy's breathing and everything is fine. Okay, and you see we're almost done. Okay, now you want to take it out slowly. Okay, and that is, th that is it. Now, you might have some residue in his mouth. You want to clean that off. You want to stimulate him like his mom would. Lick him, you know, stimulate him, you know, shake him around, you know. Right now she's cold, so she needs to go back in the warmer. But hopefully within an hour or so, she'll start feeling a lot better. And another way you can tell, look at that belly. See the pouch here? It's nice and full. So we know we got that in the belly, and she's a happy puppy. So, what we do is, we'll, we'll repeat this in about an hour, and um, give this in an hour, we'll give her about five cc's of water, and then we'll see how she does with that. With a dehydrated puppy, you want to try to get them rehydrated as fast as possible, but you don't want to waterlog them. So in about an hour, I'm going to give her about five cc's of water, tap water, and put that in her belly, because by an hour, most of the formula I just gave her should be in her intestine. So, um, and there's also um, water in, you know, water in with the formula. So um, after that point, we're going to, after that, we're going to start doing it every two hours. And then we're going to keep weighing her to make sure that she's keeping, she's not losing it as fast as she's gaining it. Um, she's going to want to gain, you know you're doing on the right track if she starts to gain about three ounces in about two days. Especially with a dehydrated puppy. Um, you're going to want to, she should already weigh like two ounces more than she did at birth, but she doesn't. So, um. That's the signs of a healthy puppy getting enough nutrition, in my experience. But as you can see, she has no ill effects. She's back to normal. Um, if you get any, like, chewing or gasping or anything, just clean their mouth out and stimulate them. Usually it's enough for them just to suckle. Sometimes the tube is irritating, and um, they feel like they're choking, you know, when it's first starting to come out. But that passes, and um, they're usually good to go after that. And as you can see, look, she's already moving around a lot more. And I gotta keep her from falling off the table. <laughs> so all the extra sugars in the milk is probably like hitting her system immediately. That's another thing. Puppies can get um, hypoglycemic when they don't get enough to eat and when you're not getting enough formula. Um, so hypoglycemia acts the same way in puppies as it does in humans. Um, and when a puppy gets hypoglycemic, they're gonna get lethargic. They're not gonna breathe very well. They're gonna get cold. Um, and they're not going to want to move around a whole hell of a lot. So sometimes just a little bit of, you know, added supplement is just enough to bring these guys around. But you can't dilly-dally about it. you got to do it right away. You can't, like, you know, mess around and play around. You have to be on top of it because these little guys can dwindle away pretty fast. Um, one more thing you should do after you're done feeding. You should weigh before and after. I usually use... A dietary scale that shows the ounces and she is one and six and one fourth ounce before she ate she was six ounces so we got one fourth in an, of an ounce in the puppy which is good now when we refeed her we want her to at least keep some of that we don't want to see her go under six ounces starting point. Um, and other than that, um, your syringes, like I said, dish detergent, no harsh chemicals, no antibacterial soaps, nothing like that. Um, and the formula I use is just actually um, yogurt, milk, um, protein powder, oh, what the heck else did I put in this? Milk, yogurt, protein powder, and um, just a little bit of water to thin it out. Um, I've used this on several puppies. They do awesome with it. Um, 
and it has lots of calories and lots of pro probiotics from the yogurt and um, lots of calcium which they need and lots of sugar and don't use the fat free yogurt use the plain jean plain yogurt um i used to use strawberry yogurt i think the puppies like that a little too much <laughs> but um because every time i'd feed it to them they get really wiry but that's the that's the tutorial on tube feeding if you have any questions um sorry about my camera like <sighs> um put them in a message me or put them in the comments below and um, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, for now, bye and um, happy docs and breeding. See you later. Bye bye.